The world is on the brink of destruction, and the Earth's mightiest heroes are going to have to pull together like never before if they want to save the day. All this and more in the pages of Avengers issue number 11. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, we check on in with the newly resurrected Phil Coulson. General Ross has put him in charge of leading the Squadron Supreme of America, a government-run super group to challenge the Avengers. And we see that this once proud booster of the Marvel superhero community has come completely and utterly turned on them. He blames them for his death, and I mean, yeah, they were kind of responsible for that. And just to truly prove how bad he's broken, Phil Coulson spends the majority of this issue torturing a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, a guy he knew who was working with the Avengers. Why he even goes as far as to burn his beloved vintage Captain America trading cards, by God, he truly has gone to the dark side. But that's just one story in an issue that's actually overflowing with stories. From there, we we head on over to the new Avengers hideout where Robbie is taking a test on D-list supervillains with the help of Carol Danvers. Captain Marvel is given the Hell Charger a once-over, figuring that if they're going to be on a team, she wants to know how her teammates' powers works and also make sure that she's not sleeping that close to an open Hellmouth. Now upstairs, the Avenger chairman, Black Panther, is holding a huge meeting from heroes from all over the world. It's a veritable United Nations of Avengers dumb. We got Sunfire from Japan, we got Arabia Knight from Arabia, we got Sabra, and we even got Captain Britain. I don't really know where he's from. Black Panther talks about how in a post-shield world, the superhero community, and especially the international superhero community, will need to come together like never before to trade intel and resources. Why King T'Challa even puts his precious medals where his mouth is and promises to offer vibranium to anyone who would need it. For the most part, all of these costumed crime fighters are totally for opening up the borders and the lines of communication in the betterment of all mankind, why Captain Britain even cracks a little Brexit joke that made me laugh. The only person who seems to be difficult, though, is Ursa Major of the Winter Guard. He was sent here by the Russian government almost for the sole purpose of intimidating everyone else and trying to derail the meeting. He does, however, bring up a couple interesting points, one being a king and being the head of the biggest super team in the world, wouldn't that give Black Panther something of a swelled ego? Should one man really have all that power? Also, there seems to be no delegate from America present at this meeting. Oh, you would think it would be Captain America, but his approval ratings are really rock bottom post-Secret Empire. The other big topic of discussion at this meeting is what to be done about Namor. He's raiding more and more rocks on oil facilities, but stranger still, his last attack in Alaska got pushed back by an unknown team. That was, of course, the work of Coulson and the Squadron Supreme of America. Their trial run was pushing back that Namor attack, and now that they've done it, the government is throwing in behind them 110%. Which means the balance of power powder keg situation is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And lastly, before we close out the comic, we have the other hard work and sea plot, and that is Thor taking She-Hulk out on a date. Well, he wanted to take She-Hulk out on a date, but he ended up getting Jennifer Walters, who they don't really seem to see eye to eye, at first at least. You see, Jen falsely assumes that Thor is only interested in her when she's big, green, and powerful and can keep up with them, but Thor says quite the opposite is true. The God of Thunder says he was drawn to Jennifer because of the woman who is in Inside the monster. After all, it's that striving to be human and mortal that is so very much like Thor's own personal journey. And so there you have it, everyone. Avengers issue number 11. Overall, it was a lot of geopolitical discussion in tight, something that I am personally a big fan of, but I can't blame you if you didn't enjoy watching a bunch of people sitting around and talking for the bulk of the issue. I am admittedly pretty fascinated by all the storytelling opportunities they could open up with Coulson turning heel like he has. I mean, what happened? happens when all that love and admiration for superheroes turns to hate and disdain. Aaron also could very easily have made him a whiny, jilted fan of superheroes. I'm glad they don't go that direction and his reasons for being mad are actually a little bit more valid. I have to wonder if we'll see Deadpool show up in this series at all in the future, considering that he was the one who actually pulled the trigger on Coulson in the first place. This series is still doing something of a slow simmer, but I enjoy it for what it is. I give it a 7 out of 10. 
Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Joel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out some of these other videos I have available from the channel. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cave Joel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you really like what I do, you might want to pick up a Cape Joel shirt. Yes, that's right, I have my own merch store over at Tee Public. Check out for great designs like my little Cape Man, stuff from the comic multiverse, fun stickers, in jokes, we got it all over at the Tee public store. You can check it out right now. And I will be sure to see you all again next time. Bye-bye.